Eos wondered if he should be so amused. The silence that had stretched out in front of him could have been deafening if he wasn't reveling in it so much. Eos Adressa was a courier by trade, and in a world of sending stones and Pegasus knights, one would think that his profession would have been made completely obsolete long ago. And one would be correct. Messengers are uncommon and often unnecessary for the delivery of words, and with transport stones, even the delivery of simple possessions. Uh, well, he would always be outclassed. But that didn't matter. He was simpler and safer in the long run, and he told people that he couldn't read, so he ran letters for the important people who needed to deal in backdoor secrets, and who needed a dumb, common-born boy to deliver them for them. Today, he ran for Astrakhan's Council of Masked Keepers. The letter was double encrypted, despite the supposed illiteracy, but it wasn't anything he hadn't seen before. It was a letter of apocalyptic predictions, kingmakers moving, unguided, barriers flickering and weakening, magic artifacts vanishing, a new plague in the eastern lands. It was one disaster after another. Of course, it only took a few minutes for, on his part to remove warnings about the magic artifacts, stress the importance of border issues, and obfuscate the exact location of the kingmakers. After all, some information was best kept to oneself. Eos Adressa was a courier, but he was also so much more than that. He was a thief, a warrior, and most importantly, a tactician. Alfara's peace was fragile, and the kingmakers were quickly creating cracks whether they knew it or not. Peace was not something achieved and brought and bought like a market item. It was a perpetual song played by everyone and everything. It required perpetual attention, fine-tuning, and maintenance. And the right person out of key would ruin the whole thing. So he manipulated information that could have caused wars silenced on the lips of a dutifully dull messenger man. As for love, he loved his home, although when pressed, he probably couldn't afford to pick a place he truly identified with. He loved his home, and so he fought for it, not with a sword and a brave face, but with pens and shadowed whispers, for Eos Adressa was a courier, but he was also a dove. The shimmering tattoo painted neatly on his shoulder blades, for peace, sacrifice, for love, bloodshed, for Althara, anything. On the dove's wings may new life be found. His home was worth protecting. Even when it seemed to be made of bile and vitriol, the shining silver line was too great to ignore. Astrocade was a brilliant example. Quiet people just trying to live how they think is best. There's hardly a law or commandment enforcing their behavior that they do it anyway, because they believe it's the right thing to do. An astral giving miracle, this city. And write this bright and heavy with greed, yet full of happy people who live to the next cheerful moment, hardworking too, helps that the whole place is a veritable, verifiable paradise. Ever a cold and unforgiving, but if people care for their neighbors, would pick up a pitchfork to protect someone they cared about if they had to, even if they seem a little intense to outsiders sometimes. Eos was a courier. He saw his home, all of it, for what it was, and what it could be. He'd often been accused of optimism by his pencil-pushing peers, but they never got to see the silver lining, now did they? Only he got to see proud nobles break their masks and snicker at a passing joke, or a group of troublemaking children drop everything to help an old lady move furniture, or farmers standing tall to protect a stranger from a shadowling even when they knew there was no way to victory. No. These were private moments of joy that only came from a place that was quite, that was not quite hopeless yet. He shifted as he walked down Astrakhan's side streets, listening to the chorus of church bells ringing off in time with each other, sliding into a side alley as his sending stone gave off a low sound. He raised it to his ear and channeled a speck of magic into it. 
hearing a soft voice speak lowly in his ear. Agent Espoir, Code Black, issued by Agent Abigail. Backup requested on Border Zone 14. The confirmation code is in the piece of warning. I will lay down my blade in the War of Shadows. I will breathe my last. Report with Transport Stone to Zone 15 to receive mission equipment as soon as possible. Agent met out. He twirled the stone around his hand. Code Black. Danger. Possible death. Confirmed death of at least one agent previously. At least. He had a bad feeling he'd be getting a lot more of these types of missions in the near future. Sign. He put the stone away and took out a smaller green one. A second later, with nary a sound, Eos vanished from the alley. Completely. To a world where the future was most uncertain. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of City of Mist Kingmakers. I'm your master of ceremonies, Ashley, and these are my players. I'm Cassidy, I play Matthias, the Rift of Typhon. Pele, and I play Adelai, the Rift of Nemesis. I'm Sonia, and I play Emma, the Rift of Athena. I'm Gino, and I play Jane, the Rift of Hera. I'm Simon, I play Aaron Frankel, whose Rift is King David. And where we last left off in a move of desperation, our team of heroes um, split off, first of all, Adle and some other companions uh, traveling on foot and some others using the labyrinth when uh, through a vicious nighthawk was delivered a box with a finger inside and a single card reading, move faster. They decided to use Labyrinth as a transportation, and they are staying at Madame Hue's, a seemingly ancient woman with not a great grasp of time. So... You guys are looking around her shop. I um, am looking at the weapons that she guided us to that were more valuable or useful. Yeah. Yeah, it seems she has some blue heart stuff in there. She has um, some odder looking magic items. They, they seem to glimmer and glow with some sort of aura. Carved of unfamiliar metals with strange gemstones. Is there any like glowing one that's maybe more golden? Uh, are you looking, what are you looking for in particular? Uh, I guess, what, what are the just anything that's glowing gold. Okay, uh, you find a small silver bracelet that gives off a slight golden aura. It has a couple gemstones surrounding it, all shining blue. Um, I think she's. Don't think. Um, Jane is going to like kind of reach out for it. Okay. Does anything happen if I pick it up? You pick it up, it kind of hums a little bit in your hand. Um, I'm going to take it over to her and ask her about it. Oh, well, she's walked up the stairs to okay. tell a person uh, she's just been referring to as the healer uh, that food is ready. I wonder if there's anyone here we could ask about these. I mean, she's probably... I don't think she's a weapons expert. Well, oh, she's a shop owner. She'd know what's in her shop. Well, that's true. Hopefully. I want to look around for a javelin and then something Ezekiel-sized. Okay, you can find a little dagger. Uh, it doesn't seem to be made of blue heart, uh, but it does give off that same, like, magical glow. It runs blue. Mm-hmm. And it and crackles that. a bit with energy. Uh, and to travel in wise, uh, you could find another blue heart one. Do I want two blue heart javelins? Yeah. It'd be good because if I throw one and then I lose it, I have another one. Yeah. I didn't yeah. Two. It, okay. I look for more blue heart arrows. Uh, yeah, you find right some. Uh, you I find. Have now. You find 10 more. Okay, so I have 30 now. 
uh, and eventually the the madam comes downstairs, uh, followed by uh, an equal. They look around the same age, so youngish uh, looking uh, boy uh, with pale, almost white blonde hair, a mean looking scar on one side of his face, uh, and very odd, solid green eyes. Are not solid black like a normal Salbanas, but they are the, in the same sort of solid way. Your eyes are cool. Thank you. Uh, are these our new guests? Yes, yes, challengers. Uh, they're going to rescue a kidnapped little boy. Uh, this is all very interesting. There's a huge prophecy on the surface, which I know you knew about and definitely didn't tell me, and I should feel a little insulted about that. But... I won't, because I know you tell me eventually. Right. Soup? Yes, indeed, I'll come, come on. Oh, and I managed to convince, uh, I managed to convince him, uh, Miss Jane, to let, let you into his reserves if you want some stronger healing item things. Thank you very much. Oh, and he also said, help yourself to the poisons if you need those too. Oh, like, nod and then follow. Be uh, he goes to grab uh, soup, and then he uh, will lead you, if you're interested, Jane, upstairs to his little... Uh, it is definitely, like, set up like an infirmary. Cops. Jane, and, Jane will like, him. Medical surprise, but they're all, med- like, magical in nature, so they're unfamiliar to you. Uh, no, doesn't really resemble an earth infirmary that much. Uh, but he will open, like, a, a cabinet... Are you interested in poultices or poisons? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm. <laughs> Can I have outside votes on this, please? Poultices. Oh, I think what you could do is just like one of those blue heart arrows and like dip it in poison so it hurts when it. And that is true. Poison. We do have one healer with us. Mm, we do. I also have healing properties that are magic. Um, so poisons then? Okay, mm, how about one of each? Lethal poisons, poisons that uh, dull your enemies, paralyzing poisons, interesting poisons that do weird things. What is up, Riley? Um, Paralysis would be nice. Yeah. Okay, let's go with paralysis then. Okay. Uh, and he uh, rum- rummages around this little uh, drawer uh, and picks out a small blue glass vial. We have the two. Um, that is a, a paralysis poison uh, called. Uh, shining step. It's not immediate activation, unfortunately. There aren't that many of those. Uh, but it, uh, the thing it will do is it will activate a uh, person who's hit with its adrenaline system to the point to uh, be unhealthy for the first. It can be lethal in strong doses, especially to the young or the elderly. So I would not suggest. It can also be used as a revival agent or if you need it, a steroid. So, uh, but the after effect is after five minutes of uh, going through your body, it will completely paralyze you uh, for another ten. Right? With a small dosage. How can it be used as a revival agent? With the adrenaline in the body speeding Adre- up the heart? Adrenaline boost uh, generally uh, wakes people up pretty decently. Thank you. Watered down, it's also used in teas as a caffeinoid. <laughs> That's wonderful to know. <laughs> you look excited. What, what is it, Cassidy? Down enough. Imagine it accidentally not watering it down. Like a bang. Of energy and just collapsing. It's like a bang or a rock. To move. How do you assassinate someone? You like spike their tea with not watered down. Not watered down. Yeah. I mean, it'd be a good way to knock them 
fantasy in your life because they would think it's normal. Uh, he looks over at you, Jane. Have you been informed of the nature of your challenge yet? No. And I'd suggest taking something lethal with you as well. Okay. Oftentimes, uh, she pits challengers against each other. Makes it a zero sum game, only one of you wins. Really? It's quite vicious. Here. Uh, and he we as a group are one challenger, by the way, I think, right? He hands you a white vial. This poison is called grave color. Grave color, even a prick of it could make someone grievously ill in a very short amount of time. And that's just from the plant, much less pure essence of it. Of which case, it will uh, kill a man in less than an hour, uh, turning their blood to a blackened sap and uh, sprouting a tall grove tree from their death. Oh. What was the first that one called, Ashley? Uh, Shining Step. And this one is called Grave Collar. So you don't think we'll all make it out then? I think it doesn't hurt to be cautious. If she didn't inform you of your challenge beforehand, it is never a good thing. It means she is plotting. Uh, thank you for the warning. Oh. Hmm. Of course. Is she luck? She'll nod at him and go back down to talk to the others. Okay. Oh, wait, actually, can she hold up the bracelet? You wouldn't happen to know what this is, would you? It looks like one of the madam's old stock. Probably an item brought over with her on the ship. A little older than my interest, I'm afraid. All right. Thank I'd you, anyway. I'd imagine... Uh, if it is from her stock, it probably has something to do with water. Huh. Cool. And then she'll join the others. Oh, yeah. And inform them that their challenge um, might be us pitted against each other. Wait, but weren't, aren't we as a group like a challenger? Because we have one sticker. I hope. I'm hoping it's against um, a different group. But that's unlikely. Oh, are you talking about what you think your challenge is going to be? She hasn't told you yep. already. Ah, now things are in for one of the worst ones. Labyrinth gets creative when she takes her time. Oh boy, that sounds good. Ah, uh, but Nikta is a pessimist, and I prefer to be an optimist, so I'm sure you'll be fine. You all seem rather capable, and you have some big destiny in front of you. You can't do that if you're dead now, can you? True. So there's a contingency plan of some sort. <laughs> Ow! Cassie yeah, so just dramatically fell over. <laughs> oh, that hurt. I'm okay. Anyway, uh, you should take some time, get to know the locals if you're going to be around here. Occasionally, challenges have you uh, do stuff for us or involve us in some way, shape, or form. So it's always good to curry favor while you're here. Mm. Just yeah. in case okay. you never know. <clears throat> One time, she had a city-wide challenge. It was a scavenger hunt, and she had the locals hide items. That sounds fun. Oh, it was very joyful. It was a lot of fun for us. Kind of like a festival when challengers come out and do their games here. Though occasionally she makes them arena matches, of which we can all watch anyway. We are nothing if not lacking in entertainment here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn to Emma and do a C face. About what? Because you kept insisting that, like, oh, it must be boring. For the labyrinth. That's <laughs> not. I was trying to lead him, lead the labyrinth on to accepting our thing. But I guess not. 
Uh, the labyrinth asks for very specific things. Of course, I lived here before, so I wasn't asked for anything. I honestly just asked to have a nice house. I got one nicer than I expected. <laughs> occasionally, she comes over, occasionally she comes over for tea. Nah, I lived here before. Ah. If anything, she's always super cordial and nice around me. I've heard she's going to be quite vicious and creepy to challengers, but she comes sometimes comes over for tea. She's real nice. What does she look like? Oh, she comes in a different form every time. That way, you know, challengers who lost and want for revenge can't track her down and kill her. Or try to. They wouldn't be able to, of course, but... Oh. So, who wants to go on a pub crawl, then? <laughs> Or we could just start doing favors for a bunch drunk. of random people. I wouldn't people. get drunk before your challenge. Well, I, we don't know where it's going. You can go to the pubs without getting drunk. So that's the best place to get get to know local flavor. That's true. Oh, well, you could start by doing me a favor. Oh, I have this huge pot of soup I need to deliver. And of course, Nikita, and he needs to do his rounds. And he's always lazy, so he doesn't do them on his own. He has to make me go make him do it for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, before we go, could you let us know a little bit about these weapons? Oh, absolutely. Uh, what did you pick and what questions do you have? Uh, she'll hold up the bracelet. Um, upstairs, you mentioned something about water. Uh, yes, yes, it was a wave finder back in the day. It's a little cracked now, it's all rusted from disuse, but I'm sure the more it's used, the better it'll be. Uh, it's used to make sure sailing is smoother, control the weather. Oh. Okay. Might not be useful for, um... Well, is it controlling the weather? Like, how so? Oh, like if, it's, if it's windy, it'll cause a countercurrent, so you're in nice and safe and smooth sailing waters. Kind of just lets you have a bit of a smoother sailing experience. It, it's a bit weak on its own, but when you have a whole ship with everyone having their own wavefinder, ah, uh, well, it was quite a sight to behold. Changed the weather completely. All right. All right. You said there were other glowing gold object things? Yeah. There Can I go look at the... Magic items. There are a bunch of other stuff in here. Can I look at the other ones? Uh, sure. What are you looking for? Uh, there's no other gold-colored ones, right? Uh, they all kind of glow and shine different colors. Any, like, not weapons, but, like, items? Her rift is... Cool. More there's, attractive too. There's plenty. There's little statuettes. There's lone gemstones. There's pieces of jewelry. What's this statue for? Uh, you pick up a, a small statue uh, of a curled up cat. It seems to be completely made of some sort of uh, purplish, bluish gemstone. Hmm. What's the statue? Oh, it's a familiar. Oh. And Catalina looks up and is like, no, I'm a. Familiar. What's that? <laughs> I got a claim on that name, whether I like it or not. You don't look much like one of those, dearie. Uh, they're from the old land there. I only got like seven of them left. I prefer not to part with that one, which is real helpful. Um, are you prefer? Are you able to part with any of them? Uh, I'd like my familiars. I don't have that any of them left. And they're right. real helpful around the house. You're oh, muted. One- you're muted. Maddie. Clarification purposes. It's not like the indentured soul of a fae or anything like that. Good. I think it's not. I think How it's would we even go about doing that? Wait, is that another thing that I've missed? Why don't people tell me these huge things? Yeah, I, there are only two fae currently that are unindentured. Sounds more well, like our familiar. Uh, it is a little creature to help you around the house. They're uh, in our native tongue called uh, Zidia. But no one really speaks the native tongue anymore, so I learned uh, the common tongue to communicate. Mm. And you said there, like, there was a statue. What else was there? Well, I have a bird, a snake, a horse, uh, and a lion. And you said you're not willing to part with any of those. I kind of like all of them are pretty attached. We've known each other for a while. All right, that makes sense. What else do you have? Like, what else is there other than statues? Do you know how they were created? 
Mm, uh, well, uh, not really. Again, I'm not one for magic myself. I mean, I used uh, to be pretty good at it, but points that arise, that kind of got taken away from me now, didn't it? Mm, um, she, is there like a crown of any sorts? Sure, there's circlets and stuff. I'm gonna rummage through them, I guess. Okay. I pull up uh, one of the circlets, what is this? And Jane will pull up another one. Uh, so the circlet mm-hmm. that Emma pulls up uh, is a sort of silver with a dull black stone in its headset, and the one the uh, Jane puts up is golden color and has uh, some pink gemstones around it. Mm, of course, you would choose that. <laughs> uh, Emma, we'll start with you. Uh, well, that specific circlet is well. It was used uh, in back in the time we are um, back in my homeland uh, to make sure no one could read your mind. But mind reading isn't really a common problem around here anymore, so. Ah, uh, about that. Oh, can you read your mind? We binds to lost start here. Uh, but I knew plenty of people who could do it back in the day, back in the homeland, but we left most of the people with that strong a magic bind. Why? What oh, danger. That can be tracked. Magical signatures back for the You can track them all the way around the world. Oh, yeah. We've been tracked. Quite a bit. Yeah, but that's because we're part of the tangle, apparently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What uh, about this one? She'll hold up the one that she found. Oh, I think you're like that one. It's an illusory circlet. It can change the way you look. Ooh, that's good for disguises. Yeah, yeah color, a color, eye color, basic height, basic gender. She takes, she takes it over to Maddie. I think you. <laughs> <laughs> no, not Excuse for that. Excuse me. No, because the, the glowing. I like the way I glow. Thank you very much. It has nothing to do with personal preference. It's more for stealth reasons. Yeah. Because people will recognize you. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. I just wasn't really I take, thinking. I take the circlet and I put it on and I would like to try and make myself glow brighter. <laughs> <laughs> it cannot perform supernatural feats, unfortunately. <laughs> does it, it does it should. dull the glow? If you I want it to. I take it off and I put it down. I don't really want it. Maybe you can take it, Jane. Oh, I see you picked up that bear dagger. Uh, yeah. It's, if, is there kickback? I mean, it can call lightning. Huh. Yeah. If I were to give it to a small child, would it be potential to harm the child? I mean, give a child the ability to summon lightning? And you don't teach them responsibly, it can be right of trouble. I trust that I can teach them responsibly. And then, uh, add just another blue heart javelin. Time. Uh, she'll look at the crown, um, and she's gonna put it on and try to turn into the Baroness. Sure. That they met the first time? Yeah, Baroness, uh, not Levithia, uh, I believe Levetha, uh, you turn into her. That what does it look? Useful. Accurate. Uh, you would note that the crown remains no matter what form you take. Oh. Kind does of anyone way. know? How old is this? You can wear a hood. You can wear a hood. Oh, that particular one, it's one of the things I got brought down with. Uh, one of the items that I took with me in my escapity. So it's an old fae artifact of some sort. I figured out what it could do for trial and error. Huh. Question. These arrows, I pull up the arrows I chose. These are just normal blue heart stone arrows? Blue heart arrows? Yeah, stuff I got from the Vestrans all those years ago. Okay, okay. So I was she... worried it'd be something like the lightning one where I'd just do it and then something weird would happen. I wouldn't. I mean, I do have arrows that do different things if you're interested in that. Oh, really? 
yeah? Arrows that are pretty creative against different enemies, arrows that uh, have different, you know, magical inclination. Orakai slaying arrows? I've heard of those, unfortunately. A lot of challengers came in uh, trying to get away from the Orakars lo- not so uh, well, a while ago now. There's lots of new faces running away from their problems then. I mean, that would make sense. Only way to get away from an Orakar is through a magic door. Ah, but of course, not all of the... Oh, well, I probably shouldn't. Uh, it, oh, it's well, I, I have a good friend who stays here sometimes. She's one of the travelings. Uh, and she uh, lives in the uh, so the, the scary place where all the Orakar live. She lives up there. Oh. Hmm. I mean, I don't know what it's like up there. She rarely speaks of it, uh, but she don't dead and she's not an oracle. Huh. And she she keeps going back, so I w- and she has the literal ability to travel anywhere in the world. Interesting. Well, anywhere on Othara. Can I look for like a magic book? Sure. Like a grimoire? Sure. <laughs> uh, you pick up a a ominous looking black book with skulls embedded in it. Oh hey hey, put that down, that's my cookbook, secret recipes. <laughs> <laughs> oh I know I misplaced that somewhere and she puts it back on the cookbook stand. <laughs> is, that, is that what it is in the other campaign? <laughs> Yes, yeah, it's just a cookbook. <laughs> we know what it's an ominous-looking book of death and it's just a cookbook. It's got all my favorite home meals in it. <laughs> I mean, it used to be some sort of great wizard diary or whatever, but... I tore out those pages long ago, they weren't worth shit to me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I need the blank pages for my cookbook. It has a soul lock on it or something. Blood binding. It's pretty creepy. <laughs> Great ambiance. And sometimes when you're alone, it chats in an unknown language. Ooh. I don't know what it's saying, but like, it's real nice. I've sometimes danced to it, get the rhythm going. <laughs> sometimes it goes to make your own entertainment around here. Back to the arrows. There was like, is there are there ones that like summon things like lightning and stuff or fire? Yeah, there's one fire that like, uh, can sends a jolt to down your enemy's spine, might paralyze them for a couple of seconds. Hmm. That would be useful. One that what covers your enemy in glowing dust, so they can't hide from your sight. Uh huh. Then they'll look like Maddie. And one of your arrows, if you have the correct stone, if you hit your target with it, as long as you have the stone co- corresponds with the arrow, you can track your target. I think I want that one. Sure, let me drag it out. And it is a green arrow corresponding with a dark green stone about the size of your fist. Okay. So it's a tracking arrow. Yeah, uh, but be careful, you lose the arrow. Well, then it's really not your use, or you miss your target, and hit something else. Oh, then you could be tracking a wild deer and so your target. <laughs> does the, does the arrow have metal on it? No. Can we put, um, like, a it. strip of metal around it? I'm sure we could. Like a very thin, foilish thing around it? Help guide it, that would be useful. Well, that Thank would you. be cool, Catalina says. Uh, I'm gonna pull out a quarter and be like, can you do anything with this? Fancy trinkets? Oh, yes. Would you like some of the strong stuff too? I'm sure Nick could help you out. Uh. He doesn't like giving away his uh, reserves, but he lives here on my on my bank, so he acts on my rules. Uh, no, it's just yours. Ah, I'll thank you all your favor then later. Oh, a favor. We got a favor. Good. I appreciate that. 
we go I go over to um Cat Cat though you're familiar. Catalina. Catalina. I knew it started with a cat. Catalina, um you're able to like shape metal and stuff. You can shape it into a very thin around the arrow, right? Sure, if uh, any of you guys have, have coins, but I was under the impression that you'd uh, left them all with Adelaide. Mm-hmm. I forgot I had, like, our coins. Our coins? We have our own coins. Yeah, it's metal pennies. Crowns. And she makes it into a little bandom. Puts it on the arrow. Nice. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Always willing to help. Now, should we do more favors for people? We should... Well, yeah, you can start soup. by carrying around my soup and helping make it up with his rounds. Do we want to split up? Half of us help the healer and half of us carry the soup. I'll help the healer. I'll help the healer too. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've already said it. Go upstairs, you too. <laughs> awesome. So me, Aaron, and uh, Catalina can do soup. Soup. And Hazel will go help the healer, and Ryan and Autumn will stay down and help with soup as well. Right, they're here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, those two. Um, Yeah. And they have picked up some magic items as well. Uh, Ryan has picked up some uh, shoes that have little wings on them, like Hermes boots. Oh! Uh, and Autumn is carrying with oh, what a they look wand like they do, that that's uh, gonna be dope. She, she asked uh, uh, Madame about, uh, and Madame explained that uh, the wand uh, could temporarily turn someone to stone. Oh, oh Medusa wand. Uh, it, but it only <laughs> lasts uh, for 30 seconds, and you can only turn one person to stone at a time. And if you've turned someone so, to stone already, it doesn't work. So what if you turn someone to stone and then tip, tip the statue over to try to break it? Oh, I imagine they'd be missing a limb when they wake up. That would be a oh. useful way to end someone's life fast. Um, can Jane, before she goes up, look for something for Mara or... Or Adeline? Oh, yeah. Or Adelaide. And Adelaide. Why not both? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She looks around for a cane. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> a magic cane of some sort. She already has like one of those. like a walking stick. She already has a magic cane. Um, mm. A non-magic one. She'll, she'll look for something that Adelaide Ooh. might find interesting. Any more circlets? There are some magical bifocals. Ooh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, I think perfect. <laughs> uh, they let you see uh, if someone is using invisibility. Hmm. And this is also includes invisible text. Invisible okay. what? Invisible text. Invisible ink. She's gonna look around for another um, item that either of them would like. Uh, and then looking for one that's more to Mara's taste. Uh, you find a little ring uh, that lets you talk to plants. Ooh. Ah, talking to plants? Yeah. She likes animals, though. Does she like plants, too? I mean, she, she hasn't probably had never to talk to, to plants, plants yet. I'm sure she'd like to. Oh, just stepping on grass and having that thing? Oh, no. Oh, no. Step on grass, you break all of their backs. Uh, so uh, the I mean, people helping the healer go up, and the people uh, going uh, with the soup, uh, she will hand uh, Matthias the huge pot, and she'll give you a rough map and some general directions of places to go. Uh, you'll have to stop here to deliver it to the Michelle family. Oh, they're very nice. You'll like them. I know they might like not like you, but I'm sure you'll like them. They're very sweet. Deep, deep inside. Uh, hmm. <laughs> and uh, maybe you need to stop at the shelter there, uh, and you'll give most of the soup uh, to the caretaker over there. Uh, Miss Ossip, you like her. 
uh, and then there is of course uh, I'm going to drop this uh, the last bit of soup off at the kindling tower we'll make a couple of them stay there and we don't have that many kindlings up to here that one tends to stay out of the mere groves as it can help it but we do have their few from back in the day when they wandered the wilds Weren't they like made after they were trapped in the mirror grove? They yeah, them. they were trapped in the mirror grove, and a bunch of them left to the mirror grove after. This was after my time, uh, but I've heard lots of stories about them. I've talked to the Candlelands themselves. Most of them uh, lived out there. Uh, one in particular you might want to talk to if you're interested in history uh, and meeting in some historical figures. Uh, her. Her ladyship, Miriam. Great slayer of Orakars and hero of the land. Oh my god, it's the candling that killed the Orakars. I think she even got like a saint title at one point. She made like oh, a huge yeah. deal out of that. Oh my god, that's so cool. Wait, which saint is he though? Oh, god. Hold on, I have it. I think I have it now. I wrote down the fake names, but not the actual keep, names of the person. I barely keep track of the, you know. Ah. Uh, what was it? She talks about so much. Hope! Saint of Hope, that's what it was. Uh, she got the first Orca, called Orca, Orca, what is his name? Start with a T. Ended with a Fell. Ah, oh, doesn't matter. It's dead now. Mm-hmm. Well, you'll take that soup. You'll take that soup now. What? Uh, she killed oh, him. Oh, talking to her about how to ask for the more cards. The, so, you might want to talk to her at the end of the round. She'll certainly yeah. be curious about you folk. Oh, but she can't tell the surface world that she's still alive. That's a big thing. She traded uh, her uh, life and times when she lost. Oh. Uh, so, uh, the world can't, she traded basically her hero worship. She can't go back up and be lauded in praise. Okay. So, which way to the first drop point? Well, Michelle family, uh, they, they've dropped around the corner. Uh, from there, it is a straight walk to the, uh, to the, uh, the center, and in which case, the, the, the candling tower, uh, you'll see it, it's the giant tree. Matthias will walk out with the big pot of soup. There's a giant tree here too. I just I'll miss that fact. Uh, and uh, Madame Hui sends the people helping with the soup on their way. Uh, and Emma, Jane, and uh, Hazel walk upstairs to Niketa, who has laid himself down on one of the cots and is now half asleep. <laughs> All right, uh, does... <clears throat> Knock on the door frame. Ugh. Uh, we're here um, to is help so deliver some... things. Oh, rounds. It's not you don't have to do it, we do it for you. They're not. The rounds. Do you have experience with any of this? Do you know how to use them? How to use what? Justice to his medical equipment. Which is... Are arcane and abstract in nature. Nope. I can do medical magic, and she'll look at Hazel. Do you? I have pretty um experienced doctor back in our world, and I know my stuff around healing magic as well. So obviously, this is all otherworldly magic to us. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I have to go make deliveries, and generally, I don't like making doing them alone. Uh, usually the madam goes with me. Uh, we exchange each other's company. Uh, but if you'd wish to help, then trade you some more potions or poultices to your liking, if you wish. For a favor? Mm. If you're going to help me, you're doing me a favor, and my favor back to you is giving you some poultices and poisons. Okay. As said. Okay. I could offer other surfaces, but I highly doubt you'd be inclined for them. You don't seem the sort. Yeah. All right. Get going. Okay. And he uh, 
very sluggishly picks up a messenger bag, stuffs it full <laughs> with some things, and trudges very slowly down the stairs. Jane will try to, like, go slow as to not overcome him. It's really hard. Like, he has a long gait, but he's purposely not using it. Like, it would almost be more effort for him to walk this slow than if he just walked at a normal pace. I don't exactly Uh, try to stay. I just, like, you know... Yeah, okay. and so uh, the that people with the soup head out, uh, and you guys head out uh, to do some rounds yourself. Uh, and while you go do, go do those favors, uh, we will shift to Tilla and Adelai uh, as you read the second entry. I know you as a, a person have already read it multiple times, but for the audience's sake, I'll read the second entry. Uh, out. Uh, 13th day of the Moor, year 911 Queens. I'm worried about Anisha. Ever since her and Cadrith got married, no, even before that, ever since she became queen of the tribes, she's changed. The fire that once burned so bright in her has solidified into a scorching ray of hatred. At first I thought she was simply determined to right every wrong in the universe. She seemed to sort to place everyone's troubles on her back, but that just doesn't match her recent behavior. Then I thought perhaps it had something to do with her daughter, Kadlina. Love can make parents want to do things they otherwise wouldn't even dream of. I thought she wanted to make the world a safer place for Kadlina to grow up in, but that's not it either. She has her freedom. The tribes are not desperate to survive. Their place in the world has been secured, yet still she wants more. Not because she or her people need it, but because she wants to make all those she perceives to have wronged her suffer. It's an odd feeling to have trusted and cared for someone so deeply only to come to the realization that they have lost their way. Unfortunately, it is an unfamiliar one to me, but I've yet to find a solution for it. I've tried to bring it up with her. She's drawing the ire of very dangerous people for very little reason, but she's nothing if not adept at hiding her rage behind the veneer of seeking righteous justice. She asked me if I was having second thoughts about having helped them. She wondered if I didn't prefer them as slaves where they couldn't act out. I abandoned the conversation after that, trying to brush off the way her emotions shifted into a sort of smug cruelty. I've tried ignoring a lot of things about Anisha lately. When she helped Whitmore and Cedra against the Shadowlings, I thought it was because she wanted to do good. But now I can see that she wanted to use her newfound reputation as leverage. What other reason would there be to publicly convert the tribes to religion not one of them believes in? I've heard Anisha mock the Court of Stars to the cheers of her comrades, and now they want to claim highest devotion to a goddess they've only ever spoken of in derision? She's asking for trouble. Evra and Indrathis are wholly devoted to their religion and tensions between the dynasty and the empire are already at an all-time high. At this point, she is picking a battle that is putting her people's lives on the line, a battle that very clearly doesn't need to happen. She's given me a million jobs. With each one, it seems to be implied that if I were to turn her down, it would be breaking my promise. I am concerned that as Anisha's rage has grown, she only sees me as one of the monsters. A monster that is by her side, sure, but still just a monster, to be used and thrown aside if I ever overstay my welcome. Still, I accomplished anything she asked of me, wondering if that would be enough, if that task would be the one that let me stand by her side. However, I know that it is all for naught. I've been through this song and dance before, and I know that trying to stand as an equal by someone who doesn't see you as such is honestly just not possible. I won't break my promise, not even after everything, but I do have to leave. If she will never treat me as an equal as a fae, then I will return in a human disguise. I'll cement my opinion of her then. If she treats me poorly as only who I am, or if it is simply what has become of the woman I once respected so deeply will be seen then. 
I can only hope that she can still be salvaged from her corroding hatred and fear. After all, it is those emotions that have driven man and Fay alike to commit travesty after travesty. I don't want another one of my dearest friends to become nothing more than a monster of history because of desperation. Anisha was my friend, and even if she doesn't seem to consider me as such anymore, I don't want to remember her as a woman driven by poisonous hate. I want to remember her as someone driven by a passion and love for life that made her chafe at anything that restricted her freedoms. Kadrith once called me a monster, heartless, a creature who couldn't understand love. Once upon a time, I believed him. Once upon a time, my self-confidence was so low that my sense of self was so dominated by the opinions of others that I took every bit of negativity to heart. However, Anisha dragged me out of that mindset, forced me to stand on my own two feet, and I will not abandon the progress I've made due to the degradation of her own heart's strength. I don't need her to survive. I never did. Just as I'm sure she and her people don't need me. I will take my leave at the end of the week, get all my affairs in order, attempt to understand the tribe's weaker points, so when I return I may aid them more effectively, and then I will go. The world is a wide place. One has changed much, much since I last wandered freely. So I will take some time for myself. I want to visit Solaris, understand why the catacombs beneath the city sing so oddly, get a feel for how other groups of Sylvana adjusted to a place that seems nothing but hostile to them. Then I will see Salshanta, Briar's End now, I suppose. I hope the candlings haven't changed too much of the place. I hardly remember much of it as it is, all things considered, and maybe I'll find something there that will aid me now. My memory has always been more fickle than most, and looking back on it now, it almost seems like the Fae of East Hollow didn't want me to remember some things about that forest. In any case, I have my next objectives, and until they are complete, I will put the triumphs out of my mind and let them stand on their own two feet just as Anisha did for me not so long ago. I have offered my aid. I realized, not as a fae, but as a friend. And I intend to do what I think is best, not as a being of magic, but as someone who truly cares for these people. Until next time, Delta. And so you finish, uh, Adelaide at this time, finish reading the two uh, journal entries that are available to you. As you are flying forth. Mm. Thoughts, opinions, general reactions. She said, Cat he said Catalina, right? Cadlina. Okay. Uh, Similar name, different person. Oh, I, I guess there's just a lot of on our minds. <laughs> I mean, you guys aren't the one answering the question. You guys haven't read this document. Metagame knowledge. It sounds like a poor boy needs. And you cut off there. Am I cutting out? A little bit, yeah. Uh, Perhaps we'll get some deeper opinions next time. So we're going to shift back down to the errand runners that have become of the rest of the party. Uh, as we follow Team Soup uh, to the first uh, residence. <laughs> Team Soup. Team Soup. Of Aaron, Matty, Autumn, and Ryan. Uh... You will arrive at the first residence, uh, the uh, Nichelle residence. Maddie's holding the pot. When do you guys knock? I'll knock and ask if they request the soup. Is this soup? Uh, and a little girl opens the door. Uh, she stands pretty short. Uh, she's probably a little younger than Felix or Alyssa. Uh, with very bright, bombastic, colored, clearly dyed hair. What color? All the colors. All the colors. 
strands are dyed rainbow around her head. Uh, I love your hair. I love your hair so much. Thank you. Are you the new errand people for the soup? We are the bringer of the soup. All right, follow me then, errand people. No problem, small child with rainbow hair. Roll me a face, Andrew. Um, five. Am I facing a physical danger? Yes. Oh, this is gonna suck. Um, can't stab lava six and body of rock and fire seven. You are facing. Got kicked in the shin. Oh. It's one, so with the seven, you don't take it at all, but it hurt. it's definitely gonna bruise. Call me a kid again and you get worse than that. I am, I may be small, but that just means I can stab your knees more effectively. Okay, good for you. And she turned. I think I call the vast majority of people a kid, and that hurt. Oh, well, it's having, gonna have to break then, errand boy. Don't call me errand boy. Well, you'll Kid. watch. Roll me another face danger. Yeah, that one was a seven. What are you? Are you adding anything? No. Okay. Kicked in the kneecap. Two. Oh. Minus to one. She's wearing like boots that are have metal. <laughs> Tips. Deliver the soup and leave, rude errand boy. I will make sure to make you a negative review upon return to Madame Way. You've people. been, you've been nothing but rude. You didn't call me rude. You're the one that opened by kicking me in the shin. You called me a child. You look like a child, and I was complimenting your hair. Well, thank you for the compliment, but do not call me a child again. And then you got overly aggressive and dared me to try again. You literally for asked you? for it. It's called. Maddie ever works at Hmm. Your your humor sucks. No, I know that. Oh, then stop making jokes. Me. No, it's not fun that way. They get better humor. I'm working on that one. Work harder. I'm trying. She keeps walking and leads you into a, a roughly set kitchen that has about eight chairs and a bunch of child-sized humanoids uh, clamber into the room, all talking and chatting to her as she rings a bell. Dana! How do I make up for it? Do you want something I have on me? Strange currency. Looks you up and down. Sure, I have a task for you. Oh, another task. All right. And she she walks out of the room and comes back with a regular looking large rock. About a foot in length. And she hands it to you. Okay. I want you to carry this. Uh, well, you're doing your rounds, and then do a lap around the city and return to me, and it'll be mystically charged with magical energy. Sure, no problem. Uh, so I, put, I hold the I hold the pot of soup like this, and then I hold the rock in the other hand. No sweat. Yeah, uh, actually, even with your super strike, our rock's pretty heavy. <laughs> this is a heavy rock, dude. She picked it up with one hand. I'm gonna. I, I I hold the rock like a baby, and I, I hold out my fist for her to call. What? She's a little confused, but then eventually gets it. I put the stuff down. And... Nice. It's it's essentially positive affirmation. Like that was really cool. You oh, you need to get better hand. positive affirmation too. It's a cultural. It has thing. to get better. Isn't that the struggle every single day? Not for some people, but clearly for you. 
Yeah. I know. I'm a really bad person. I'm working on it. Yeah, you said you call everyone a kid. I imagine everyone hates you. Everyone hates me, but not for that reason. Yeah. Well, then you're, you're sure you're not just dismissively rude to every person you meet? No, I'm just a douchebag. I don't know what that word means. I'm dismissively rude to every person I've met. Thought so. Good luck on your errands. Thank you. I like the rest of you errand people, though. Here, come take a cookie before you leave. <laughs> Matthias is standing by the door laughing. He's like, <laughs> This is a predicament. Hey, perchance, your your hair is really colorful and you seem to know a lot about this town. Do you know any way to preserve a finger? No! Get out! Bye! Slams the door. Might as well end with a bang. And we switch to Jane, Emma, Hazel, and Nikita. Uh, Following uh, Nikita, who moves very slowly on his rounds, <laughs> taking in Nathan. on stopping at every possible time there was to stop. There's a bench on the side of the road. Sit there. Oh, go out of his the way to hit No, literally, he says, "Well, that bench looks lonely." Oh, look a stop sign. Like, sure, <laughs> it's not for pedestrians. <laughs> just stop anyway, just to be careful. <laughs> Oh, look, a dog. I have to go pet it. Hi, that I can agree with. I, res- I respect that one. I respect that. And he stops, and he makes small conversation with every person on the street. My patience is getting. You get the feeling that by the time you've done one of your errands, Matthias's group will have done all of theirs. <laughs> Uh, the other one. So, where's this first person we're uh, visiting on the round? That we're supposed to be doing red. Oh. <laughs> yeah. We're visiting Sir Sire Holland. Oh, wait, where's his house? Uh, he doesn't have one currently. Oh, where is he? Uh, should be somewhere near Side Park. And where's the side part? Outside, of course. The left side, to be specific. Okay. No one goes to right side park anymore. Why? Um, got infested with vicious creatures. Okay. I think they must have wandered into the labyrinth and the labyrinth found them cute or endearing or something. Just put them in the park. People will to stay out. Okay. That's not odd. Oh, this whole place is odd. You get used to it. That's true. But oh, you have... Oh. Hmm? How long does it normally take for you to do your round? Depends on the weather. <laughs> Snickers because you're in a cave. Well, it depends on how uh, how much fog there is, or mist. Sorry, mist level. Whether rocks are falling, you know the general. Got to deal with rain here. Sometimes it's get, gets real bad. Concussions everywhere. Mhm, mhm, mhm. That just means our rounds are longer because then I have to stop at every other person who wasn't fast or smart enough to get inside. Oh, yeah, of course. Speaking of, when is the next rock gonna fall? I look up to see if a rock is gonna fall on me because this is conversation. Yeah, where's the rocks falling? You get the feeling he's being facetious. Jane is just looking amused at Emma and kind of walking silently. You definitely, 
you get the feeling he definitely knows what he's doing. Like, he's doing this on purpose. Yeah, I figured. All right, now just keep walking slowly. Eventually, you reach Left Side Park. A very small but idyllic place of nature. A small piece of the outdoors in the underground. Cute. Yeah, and there is a man in uh, a knight's uniform. You don't recognize the order that it belongs to, but he wears bright, bright blue and then a much darker strap of blue with a bunch of medals to, uh, on a sash. Mm. Hail, Sir Holland. Here on the rounds, as usual. How's would you rate your pain today? Mm. Nick, tell you've got guests. It's not polite to not introduce them. Come, come. What are your names? Hello, I'm Emma. And I'm Jane. She'll offer her hand. Oh, he'll shake it. I offer my hand. Uh, Hazel will wave. And I'm Hazel. <laughs> background. Mm. Well, it's nice to meet you. Are you helping our Nicky Doe with his rounds? He's not nearly as late as he usually is. Um, Jane will chuckle a little and um, nod along. Yeah, we're challengers. No. Have you got the details of your challenge yet? No, apparently it's. We're worse for wear. What number are you in line? Three. Three. Mm. Good luck. What number is currently at? Nobody knows. Oh. They don't announce it publicly. Oh. Well, you know, there could be negative numbers and you'll just be waiting here a while. <sighs> yeah. I mean, Labr- the more or maybe she's counting backwards numbers. from 100 instead of going starting from 1. Labyrinth likes to give you the pieces and not tell you the rules. Yeah. And she cheats sometimes, dear. Oh her own game. She'll let you walk around the city for a while, figure out your personality, and devise a game she'll know you'll lose. Oh. I hope that doesn't happen to you. You all seem nice. I, I, I hope so, too. Yes, well, again, rate your pain. I know you want to make lots of conversation with the strangers here, but I do have other patients to get you. Oh, now you're in a rush? I'm always in a rush, just not the same type of rush as everyone else. Strange little man, Nikita. Strange little man. And you are an odd big man. Now, may I have, so I know, my rate of pain, so I know what medicine to give you. Ah, uh, six, low back, side arm injury, my, prosthet- my prosthetics rusting a bit. I'm not a mechanic, I cannot help you with the prosthetic, so hold on. Uh, but I can give you some pain relief, as always, uh, and I would highly request you make up with Miss Maud and just go see her to get your prosthetic fixed. Mm. What prosthetic do you have? Uh, he'll uh, slam his foot on the ground and it rattles, it's made of metal. Ooh. Mold made it for me years ago. Got broken. One of the challengers got a little ruckus. Me and Mold don't like no. each other now. And I won't go to her to ask her to get it fixed. I'd rather die I... of this metal leg uh, malfunctioning and me falling on my head. Oh, come now. You used to be um... friends. It can't be that bad stares at you. No. What's good sulking? Did you enjoy your time spent together? Reflexively? Not really, no. Looking back on it, worst years of my life. Really? Mm. Use a harpy of a moment. 
Jane, uh, um, is, uh, can Jane assume just because she's Jane, like he's probably not really thinking that way. You can try to make an investigation check if you want to get some insight into uh, Sir Sire Holland's <laughs> mindset. Okay, eight. Um, then I'm gonna add woman's intuition. Um, and um, studious, I guess. You have two I questions. Like to stare characters. Um. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna ask if I really think that he, he probably does actually enjoy spending time with her. Oh no, he hates her guts. Oh. oh. Like, if he wasn't a better person, he might be a murderer. And he never enjoyed time with her? He's telling the exact truth. He really thinks everything he's saying. Okay. Oh my god. Uh, but... Uh, Nikita hands him the medicine and wanders on. Good luck with your prosthetic. He's wandering really slowly, right? No, he actually wanders away quite quickly. Yeah. Right until he's out to... of earshot of Holland, and then he wanders slowly again. Okay, so I have like a few minutes before I have to catch up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's fair. Uh, this prosthetic of yours, where exactly is it rusting? Mm. Joints. I could maybe help? Possibly? We can see what we can do. He'll pull up his pant leg. It is a metal that you don't recognize, and it is almost mm. completely rusted. Oh. Like, it is hardly recognizable at what it once was. Mm. This vendetta has clearly gone on for a long amount of time! <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> so it's not like I can copy how it was made exactly. Yeah. It it's a little too far gone. Catalina mm. might be able to, but I don't know about us. Catalina's with Maddie's group, unfortunately. Uh, that is going to fall apart soon. <laughs> you might get your wish sooner than later. Mm. Could we go there for you? I'll have to talk through to get it fixed. Can't have an errand boy for a leg. I thought maybe I could make him like a prosthetic copy of that made out of metal, but no. Not if I can't tell it apart from the rest. Yeah, and yeah, you guys move on catching up to Nikita. What did you think oh, of Sir Helen? Helen. How long has that been gone on? No longer than I've been here. I think oh he's my. desperately in need of a new leg, so... <laughs> it's not like I can make him a new one. He it's not like be... I can tell the different parts. Not with that round of rust. And so you'd have to forge it. You can make things. Nope, I'd have to create it. You can see different battles. Yeah, kinda. Hmm. Curious. What are the limitations? Why do you want to know? I like magic. Curious about its usage. You don't have uh, to tell me. I can tell well, you a bit about my magic in exchange. Sure. That seems like a fair trade. Uh, well, I can only create things that I know what they are. Like, if it's a natural thing, like a fruit or something, I have to know, like, the genetic composition. Do you know what? Chemical compound? Like, I can make, like, pure substances from the periodic table pretty easily. Most of those words, I don't know what they mean, to be honest with you. Perfectly clear. Like, you have gold here, right? Yes. I can make pure gold. I just can't, like, make a mix. And, like, I, living stuff is a lot harder, because I have to know exactly what pure substance this is made out of, you know? Mm-hmm. It's a limitation to an ability, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of confusing. That's why I stick to inanimate objects a lot. Guess I should share with you a bit of my magic, then. Mm-hmm. Well, 
uh, he points to his eyes. If you already couldn't tell, I'm not exactly your run of the mill mage. Mm hmm. Uh, a while back, the Salvano were experimenting ways to reverse the ritual. They got it half right. Unfortunately, the side effects were immense. Uh, so, uh, they kind of scrapped that project. After they realized what a danger it could pose. Of course, they did make some useful people from that. Uh, so, people like Selbana adjacent. Uh, but instead of regaining human magic, they were a little more in tune to the type of magic that they use. The tangle. Yeah, whatever it's called. I didn't much look into it. We don't get many fair guests. My brother doesn't like them. She tends to make her doors disappear when they're around. Mm, interesting. I think she had a bad experience with the fae once. Huh. It came in, it won, and then it made her look like a fool. I think she takes looking like a fool much harder. You could win the game, sure, but if you outsmart her... Oh, well. She really hates that. Okay, so don't try to outsmart her. Got it. And she's carried such a grudge for so long. If she would, I bet she wouldn't even let familiars in the city. Mm. Yeah, well. Uh, but my specific magic, uh, I can turn waters into poisons. That is epic. That's cool. Yeah, any liquid substance I can transmogrify it into something more harmful than its original state. I can see how dangerous that could be, especially up there. Well, actually I'm not sure if it's- Oh, is that where you get all the poisons from? How do you get the healing stuff then? Make them from the garden. Not that hard. Mm. I do, I am actually a trained healer, believe it or not. Yeah. He used to be quite famous up there, but only in certain circles, you understand. The fact that Salvana had been tinkering around with the ritual couldn't get out, or... Well, there'd probably have been another war. Yeah. Wait, did the Salvana were tinkering around with it? Yes. To try to get their own magic back? Mm -hmm. And then they scrapped that idea completely, or do they keep trying? They made three successful agents, me, and two others. This wasn't that long ago, I don't think, in person to the surface world. Probably oh. a century or two ago. Oh. And they, they have green eyes, right? They have varying <laughs> eyes. Actually, okay. the other... You know we're here to kidnap a child. An angel. Kidnap, Wait, un kidnap, un kidnap a child. Unkidnap a child. To rescue a child. To rescue. To rescue. Oh. By a Sobana. Who using used magic. magic. Well, I may not very much like the dynasty, but I do enjoy keeping their secrets. I've been paid a lot of money for many years to do so. Well, are you still being paid money? I mean, I'm a traveling, I don't have to stay here. Oh, you're traveling. <laughs> Thought twice, yeah. it was dumb. <laughs> One of the competitions was just a square fight to death with my opponent. I don't think she liked the guy that challenged her. Definitely rooting for me. Let me pick weapons, and he had to come in unarmed. Ooh. <laughs> that was pretty easy then. Yeah. Easy fight for me. And then the second one was a riddle, which unfortunately was also definitely prone to my favor. Yes, because it was you. about poisons. <laughs> yes, we liked you. She does take a liking to people that are blunt with her, I suppose. She doesn't understand fear. Mm. But she does know that it makes humans more prone to make mistakes. Oh. 
So, a lot what of What do you mean testing. by people who are blunt with her? People who don't take her shit. I don't possess much fear of death, so I don't much care. All right. Or to her favor. Yeah. Uh, and lots of other stuff. But, so I don't have much care about outcomes and events, or whether or not she just chooses to smite me there on the spot, so I work mm. with practical impunity, and she appreciates that. More than she'll actually say, because she makes people afraid. Mm. It pushes people to be desperate so she can win easier. And yet she mm. hates the emotion of fear. And people who feel it, in turn. That's why most of her victors will be the brave and the bold, or the stupid. <laughs> Egregiously stupid. So Maddie will probably win. My <laughs> opinion of your friend. My opinion of your friend, your friend the there. Card. <laughs> Pat, Pat, Pat's Emma's shoulder, like, <laughs> kind Not of was veered part. around the same way. The brave and bold part next to the hint of stupidity part. It's his child we're here for, after all. True, yeah. I'm sure his faith will be unwavering in... I heard of the Kingmaker oh, prophecy. Yeah. I don't know how long you guys have been there. Do you have any candidates yet? I uh, no. You guys kind of seem like you're living a more hectic lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of hard when you're on the run. And you're trying and someone's child is being kidnapped. And you kind of have to survive. Kind of hard you say to they were kidnapped by a Sobon. Do you know if they're dynasty or tribes? Uh, oh yeah, we we're supposed to pick them up at the Lotus tribe. Which I don't. That's old. Yeah. Lotus yeah, tribe yeah. are relatively friendly. They live on the yeah. the border, not so they. I mean, I like to stick their middle finger up at the border patrol, but generally they're pretty nice. That's what everyone's been saying, but. I think they're having some festival pretty soon or something where they're gonna, you oh, know, dance soon? around the border, basically doing one big fuck you to the border patrol. They're gonna That's do it. Fantastic. They're gonna have mock battles in the daytime and the nighttime. That's, that's great. You know, piss off some court members. Oh, they live to do that. They basically live to poke the bear perpetually. Luckily, the Everin Bear has been sleeping for centuries. It's quite odd. Maybe the kidnapper chose it as a neutral ground, perhaps? I don't know why they would. Did you said they had like, magic. Do you know what type? Uh, they were using the little teleportation stones and stuff. That's even odder. Yeah. I mean, I am technically a Salbana with magic. I don't use the stones. They're not sold or in the dynasty on the tribes, so they're kind of a rarity. Why? Because people without magic can't use them. Useless bloody gemstones are to anyone who not possession of the right type of magic to use it. That is odd. So it's either someone under Silvertongue's control who somehow got hold of it, or... How do you know Silvertongue? You guys have had not a fun time on this planet, if you know that name. No, no, we have not. He's not fun. Or someone pretending to be a Silvana. Mm -hmm. They have the, like, the full black eyes and everything, which is really weird. Oh, look, there's a cat. And he starts wandering away. <laughs> I go and put the cat with him, because that sounds fun. Uh, and we shift focus uh, back to Matthias and Aaron as you guys are walking along. Uh, and as you guys are, you've dropped a soup at, out at the, the caretaker's uh, place. She just picked it up from the outside. She didn't say a word to you. She just looked at you silently, stared into your soul, scooped out most of the soup, and walked away. I liked her. <laughs> She's much better than the last chick. <laughs> Uh, so you guys are now making your way to your third stop and final stop uh, toward the Candlings. Uh, and more specifically, La Lady Miran. To the big tree, still carrying a rock. Rock is kind of heavy. 
Yeah, it's adjacent to the right side park. Okay. Why are you... So... I guess I'm gonna go knock on the door. No, I'm not, Aaron. Knock on the door. I'm holding a rock. Okay. Proceeds to knock on the door. Okay. Uh... And a cavalry man opens the door. Oh, are you here to deliver the, the soup? You come with the soup. Soup. The soup. Yeah. Oh, come in. Proceed with caution. And he, he leads you up this uh, tree tower that seems to be have been like made in a sort of copy of the Mora doll. The tree that you've laid eyes on once. Uh, and uh, there are a lot, not really a lot, but a couple or so candlings uh, meandering about the tree. And it takes you to the uh, middle floor, uh, has you put the pot in the middle of the table since this is your last stop. Scoops out the soup. Uh, and uh, nods at you. Uh, we heard that we could talk to the Saint Pope here. Ah, after our local celebrity. Yes, I will fetch my room for you. He ghosts up the stairs and wanders, uh, and instead of coming back, it is a. Uh, older looking candling you guess they are ridiculously tall must i remind you uh, and she is tall even for that those circus performers who look like they're walking on stilts we're walking on stilts yeah. kind of looks like that proportion what i aspire to be and she's wearing this long green robe that has patches of darker green segmented armor uh and she has a uh, twin blue heart swords by her side. Anyone else I'm vaguely intimidated right now? A little, a little bit. Yeah. You wanted to speak with me? Uh, yeah, we have questions. Oh, I'm sure everyone does. You can give an autograph at the end of the ride. Yeah, the other. Oh. Not those types, not like a, ooh, how'd you do it questions, but more of like a, hey, we need to get to know your world because we're destined to pick the next rulers and we'd like your input because you seem like a pretty upstanding member of society question. Oh, you're the, what is it called, the kingmakers. Yes. The earth. Either your names have even made their way down here or so. Props on your legacy, I suppose. Yeah. We totally what are your anything. questions? I'll try to be as quick in my answers. Didn't think that far, actually. So, Aaron, what are your questions? Um, um, I don't know. Oh, well, then I guess we are done. She turns and starts walking away. Uh, I do, I have a couple. The ore car. Every almost the more about to tear itself. I mean, not the specific Orokar, but the Orokar in general. Everyone wants to know about Caravel. I repeat. So one thing. Um, whatever. What are your questions? Mm. Are they really all 100% bad, or is it just the ones that make their way over? I mean, how should I bloody know? I've been bended and all. And Terrafil seemed pretty fucking terrible, considering he killed a general 60% of the Altaran com- population in half a year. Yeah, that seems like a pretty shitty person. Starting a Shadowfell play, Shadowing Plague that has, uh, you know, uh, still plagued the continent. What I have overheard. And it crippled me very badly to the point when I got thrown down here afterward, I couldn't win the stupid game. 
a little salty about that? Just a little bit, you know? Just a little bit. I didn't get to enjoy my victory. I had planned a victory celebration. There was going to be beer. It was going to be great. Sounds pretty good. Yes, I was going to drink until I could not remember how I killed Terrafell. It was going to be great. Instead, they labeled me a saint of a religion I don't stick shit in. And I'm gonna toss them here! They don't even- ah! Sorry, this is a sore point. I like her too. Thank you. Uh, I know it's probably been a while, but how big of a problem do you think they're going to pose? I don't know, I had some think about this. There you are going up. My opinion, not going to last. No one around the mirror grows. Sure did it. Only took a few thousand arrows. And we saved their asses and they lauded us as heroes after, apparently because of me. And I wasn't there to see them kiss my ass. You did. You went down in history. You were one of the first people I heard about when I reached this planet. But I wasn't there to see it. I got stuck in the labyrinth. If it makes you feel any better, we were, we're under specific instructions now that we are not allowed to talk about you on the surface. Because no. Because it would shake shit up. No, I know that because the things that I bet <laughs> was my victory celebration. <laughs> and if I ever go back to the surface, I get my victory celebration. So I just can't go back. As long as I am lauded a hero and I have a guaranteed celebration, I'm not allowed. So should we try and bury your name? It's not gonna work. I'm one of the most prominent saints ever. They have, like, portraits of me that are apparently way prettier than my actual face. Oof. I haven't seen the portraits, but I don't see how that's possible. Oh, flatter. I do like you. Might as well try. The first person I delivered soup to kicked me in the shin and then the knee. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got stuck with the Michelle residence. <laughs> mm. yeah. Oh, what did you do to anger the madame? I said I like your hair, kid. No, no, no. The madame does not send people she likes to deliver soup to the Michelle residence. I don't know. I was... We volunteer to deliver the soups. Yeah, we did volunteer. Oh, you're good soup. people. You're genuinely good people. Oh. <laughs> uh. Uh. <laughs> the worst! <laughs> Hey, wait a second. Have yeah. no one told you, filled you in on Madame Rey's reputation? No, we were just told that to go there first. Yeah, um, she's a warrior of great renown and a mage who, you know, may or may not have went crazy at one point and gone on a murder rampage when she found other people again because she was isolated for so long and you know continued really liking murder found out she really liked it with uh i was then a little bit of an assistant to madam ruling bitch of the underground the labyrinth so she's not a great person oh no and nikki does not either he's an assassin and he gets to leave this bloody place <laughs> That's almost cool. worse! No, that is worse! <laughs> well, that's interesting to know, at the very least. But it's not like this is a. I mean, that doesn't situation. bode well for your challenge. <laughs> if the madam doesn't like you, then it is likely that everyone doesn't like you. I don't think the labyrinth likes me. I don't think anyone likes me at this point. I'm gonna I turn think you're it out. I'm gonna specifically address Autumn. Do you like me? She just looks at you. <laughs> see? Is that a real Do question? No, I know exactly how you feel about me. Good. Stupid, not blind. Yeah, some would beg to differ. A bit of both, sometimes. 
<laughs> yeah, but uh, this isn't really a challenge that we can afford to lose. Yeah, well, I thank you well enough. You delivered some kind compliments and a delicious soup. So apparently, yeah. I have to run a lap with the rock now. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> it's been getting heavier every step you take. Well, fuck. <laughs> uh, but Lady Myron laughs you out of the <laughs> shower. And I that... really want to run a lap with this rock now, just to prove a point. <laughs> but that is where we will call it for tonight, as we drift back to the surface world where there was a chill in the air. Alien felt it run down his spine and seep into his very being as he sat cross-legged on top of his stone. Is everything well, Deloveline? A deep voice spoke from behind him. His Rolos, his protector, Malaru. He didn't turn to look at her or open his eyes, feeling Falon's voice whispering to him. When he next opened his eyes, he was crying. Melru was by his side as he leaned into her shoulders. Death's on the horizon, Ru. I saw it. War? He shook his head. So much worse than that. Blind attacking the innocent. A field of fire and blood. The Western barrier shattered and to a million tiny pieces. Everything is going to get so much worse. She looked at him. An oil car. And more, he agreed, standing up. What do you want us to do? He knew she was asking Falon more than him, but he was still the one to answer. We'll call council at Solaris and up our defenses, send warning to Andrathis and Evera if we have it, if they'll have us, and we'll send a panel in for that. What will we be doing? There'll be trouble on the border. We must go to bury our dead, deal with the fallout. Ru nodded. I'll gather our things and send off some letters. That's what Alien liked about Ru. She trusted him implicitly and was very a very practical soul. Some might see that as a flaw, but as the mouthpiece of Nonala Elgar of prophecy, he preferred people didn't question his insights. It only wasted precious time that, in this instance, they couldn't afford to waste on trivial arguments. He stood from his rock, trying to rein in the desperation that took hold of him whenever he had a dire prophecy. The future could be changed, simply not by him. For now, all he could do was wait for the people around him to do their jobs as best they could and let the pieces fall when they may. He could only hope they wouldn't be too late. And with that, uh, we end episode 15 of Kingmakers. Watch! Uh, I've been your master of ceremonies, and we will see you all next time.